Hi, Justin Cantor here. I wanted to share with you some of the liner notes projects I've done over the last decade. I've been privileged to write for close to 60 CD reissues, uh, mostly single CD reissues, in some cases anthologies or box sets of multiple albums. So I just picked uh, a dozen uh, out of those and thought I'd share with them I'm sorry, share them with you just uh, for your information if you're interested in the artists and maybe hearing more of their music and uh, learning more about them. And I'll tell you what I can on the spot. Some of them have been a while, so it's hard to remember all the details and doing these uh, sort of impromptu videos. I forget certain things in the midst of thinking ahead. So bear with me. Also with the glare, because I'm not a professional lighter, as you can tell if you watched any of my recent videos. Um, so I'm going alphabetically for the most part. Um, here is the Jonathan Butler uh, anthology released through Soul Music Records uh, in 2018. This contains 32 tracks and for the most part they span his output on Jive Records from uh, 1986 to 1990. Now there were four sorry, four full-length albums as well as an EP done in that time. And there's also a later track he did collaborating with the saxophonist Kenny Dolfer on a rendition of Junior Walker and All Stars, What Does It Take to Win Your Love for Me? But this contains many of his hits, including the extended version of Lies, um, his first uh, crossover hit, um, a remake of the Staple Singers, If You're Ready, Come Go With Me, which was a duet with Ruby Turner that was actually included on her uh, first full-length album and uh, he did mostly instrumentals on his first album and most of those cuts are included on here. Uh, there's also classics like Take Good Care of Me, More Than Friends, the title cut Sarah Sarah, Heal Our Land, and uh, it's including an essay in the booklet by me with uh, an exclusive interview with Jonathan conducted for this set and also uh, quotes from Barry Eastman, who produced a lot of his output during that time. So you'll get some insights into their backgrounds and making the music. This next one is Yvonne Elliman. It's a double CD reissue, also through Soul Music Records, that was done um, in 2015, 2016. Um, she's best known for If I Can't Have You from Saturday Night Fever, and also for portraying Mary Magdalene, both on stage and in the movie adaptation of Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, singing I Don't Know How to Love Him. So she's known for that hit, as well as Love Me. And um, these two albums are Yvonne and Night Flight. Night Flight is the 78 album that included If I Can't Have You. And Yvonne was really her last full-length release to date, including Love Paints, which went on in subsequent years to be covered by many and to become sort of a high energy and disco classic. Now this uh, two CD reissue, a lot of way there, sorry, but it does include the uh, promo disco mix of Love Pains. It also contains Moment by Moment, which is the title song that Yvonne sang from the infamous uh, John Travolta and Lily Tomlin film of the same name that I guess both of them would want to erase from our history. It's kind of an interesting movie to watch if you ever get the chance. Never been released commercially, and I don't think you're going to find it available on streaming or digital sites. But if you can manage to see it, it's interesting. Anyhow, the uh, song was a uh, success, and it's a lovely tune. Um, so next we're going to go to... Oh, I, I should mention, I did interview Yvonne for that reissue. She was very gracious to share her memories. And you can hear excerpts of that particular interview on my YouTube channel as well. But you need to get the CD with the liner notes to read more of that. So here's Curtis Hairston, the late Curtis Hairston. Uh, very talented guy. Uh, he is known by a lot of people for singing with the BB&Q band on its last album, including Dreamer and Genie. Uh, he also had several records on Earl, the Pearl Monroe's independent label, Pretty Pearl, before he did the solo Atlantic album. Um, those were I Want You All Tonight and I Want Your Love in Just a Little Bit, to name a couple. But on this album, his self-titled one from 86 on Atlantic, also reissued through Soul Music Records. They do so many great things. Shout out to David Nathan for his work on behalf of preserving soul music legacies of many artists that would otherwise be forgotten. Thank you, British Ambassador of Soul. Um, includes Chillin' Out, um, as well as, 
let me see, I'm forgetting. Let, you know, let's make love tonight, you're my shining star, uh, take charge, and the morning after. And there are extended mixes of all those songs that I mentioned as bonus tracks on this album. Now, Nona Hendrix was involved in some writing on this, Nona Hendrix from LaBelle. So I did get a few quotes from her um, by email. I didn't get to talk to her by phone, but still she provided a little bit of insight. Um, Lisa Morgan, who I'm going to get to a project of hers in just a minute, uh, she also um, knew Curtis briefly, so she offered just a little bit of insight. Unfortunately, the um, producer that worked with Curtis on a lot of this album um, was someone I wasn't able to get a response from. So, um, since Curtis was no longer with us, I was happy that Nona and Melissa uh, were willing to share some of their time. Now, this is one of the earliest liner notes I did um, back in 2011. It's Evelyn Champagne King when RC had taken the champagne out temporarily. I'm in Love from 1981. Uh, this was the first album on which she worked with Kashif and Paul Lawrence. Whom, uh, she went on to work with Kashif, as you know, on Love Come Down from the Get Loose album and Betcha She Don't Love You. Uh, the title cut obviously was a big hit from this, uh, featuring BJ Nelson on um, background vocals. She sang with Robert Palmer, a lot of people know from that. Uh, BJ, as well as Paul Lawrence and Evelyn herself, um, helped me out by um, contributing interviews, interview time, uh, to do the liner notes for this. And uh, this was on a reissue label that um, did a lot of great releases for quite a while called Big Break Records. And uh, a previous reissue they'd done of Get Loose, um, their writer had interviewed Kashif, who I ultimately got to interview for several other uh, projects, but on this occasion um, I wasn't connected with him yet, so they supplied me with some of the notes from that writer, and I was able to incorporate those into this essay. Now, this also includes uh, Spirit of the Dancer, um, which is not one of the um, bigger hits, but it's one that I like a lot. Um, if You Want My Lovin', uh, which features the great vocalist Rochelle Capelli on the course, and there's a UK single mix of that as a bonus, as well as the single version of Don't Hide Our Love, the sort of duet that uh, Evelyn did with Kashif. He's just singing lead on kind of the end of the song. And uh, let's see, there is the 12-inch mix of I'm In Love, and uh, also the single version of Spirit of the Dancer. So thanks to everyone that took part in that. Now, some people know me as Crystal Fan, and this is uh, one of the three Crystal reissues that uh, I was very fortunate to uh, be able to uh, write the liner notes for. Um, all these ladies are just fantastic, and I've been very blessed to know them over the last decade or so. Um, unfortunately, uh, one of the original members, who's not pictured on here, but who was in the group for most of the recording of this, was the late Dee Marie Warren, who had originally been in Alta McLean and Destiny with uh, Roberta Steiger Taylor. I know it's hard to see this cover, but um, Tina Scott um, over here um, formed Crystal, uh, Crystal Blue originally in the 70s. And um, after uh, Alta McLean went solo, um, kind of restarted the group. Um, and Karen Floyd, um, who had been in the group prior to that, Reformation um, joined as lead vocalist of the New Crystal. Uh, very interesting, this group's history. I even um, included them in a paper that I wrote about for a um, course that I took at Berkeley as part of my uh, music business management um, program. Um, because ultimately, and, and they've we've talked about this, so I'm not saying anything that you know they haven't uh, officially, well, or not officially, haven't said themselves in some way or another, but. You know, there was a lot of, uh, in those days, sort of some acts, unfortunately, being kind of tax write-offs for the label, because it always fascinated me that despite them not having some of the commercial hits, they remained on the label. And what I found out um, was that um, sometimes they really weren't promoted because the label wanted to have certain acts that they could write off as expenses. Um, because it certainly wasn't for a lack of talent. And I know I'm going on a lot about this, but I really love Crystal. And um, their first album was called Getting Ready, and some people might know the tracks After the Dance is Through, and Nobody's Gonna Get This Loving But You. This album, Talk of the Town, the reason I chose this one is because in some ways, I mean, I love all of them, but in some ways it's my favorite because it sort of was going for that crossover vibe, but it still maintained the core Crystal sound. And... 
in addition to Karen's dynamic leads, um, there uh, are songs on here that feature Tina and Roberta uh, doing uh, parts of the lead, particularly the uh, dynamic dance track, Shattered Glass, and uh, I Want a Man Who Can Dance. And the singles on here were a remake of The Supremes' Love is Like an Engine in My Heart, which uh, the girls recalled fondly in their interview with me for these liner notes as um, the one occasion where they all got to sing together in the booth because usually they would go in individually and do different parts. I should mention that Leon Silvers and his Silver Spoon stable of uh, producers uh, helmed most of these productions. So uh, Wardell Potts, Joey Gallo, William Bryant were a few of the other talented players on these. Uh, so I don't know if it was for this project, but Leon Silvers was someone that I was not um, able to secure interviews with. I know others have, but it's not, you know, always easy to um, get the participation. But the main thing was that the ladies participated. Um, and the fourth one, in this case, being Robbie Danzi, who was just joining the group initially to stand in for Karen Floyd, who was about to go out on maternity leave. And in the meantime, tragically, uh, Demon Marie Warren uh, was killed in a car crash um, in one of the canyons in Los Angeles. Very tragic story, very young, in her early 30s. Uh, so, uh, you know, that part is really sad. Um, there's also her distinctive sounds and harmonies on tracks like the title track, Talk of the Town, which I really love, and Hard to Believe. Um, a great mid-tempo tune. Um, Say La Vie as well, which is a beautiful, beautiful song, which Karen really shows her um, explosive range, but not in an overblown kind of way. Now, Miss Melba Moore, uh, Read My Lips. So I had interviewed Melba before I did this uh, liner notes assignment. So I used some of the quotes from that, and I also talked with Zach Vaz, the executive producer, who was behind a lot of important R&B releases in the 80s and 90s on Capitol Records and at Motown, I believe. But Read My Lips was a project that Funky Town Grooves reissued, and I was very pleased. This again has that crossover quality, but still maintained that uh, real uh, substantial and uh, fulfilling R&B sound. Uh, the title cut probably being the most poppy, but the second single, When You Love Me Like This, a duet with Lulu Thomas, I'm definitely in the R&B feel, and as well as the third single, I Can't Believe It's Over, which was uh, written by Lou Corton, who you might know for some of his solo work. I'm really sorry about this glare there, that's better. Um, anyway, uh, there are cool bonus tracks on this. There's the extended versions of the songs that I mentioned to you, as well as an instrumental of the track Winner, which is really cool. Keith Diamond, the late Keith Diamond, uh, who did a lot of work on Billy Ocean's Suddenly album. Um, he was uh, behind some of these songs. So a, a real great uh, production value to these. Uh, one of those songs was King of My Heart, which is kind of an answer song to Caribbean Queen. And uh, she did a remake of Fleetwood Mac's Dreams, which I always thought was really cool. It's not straying too much from the original, but definitely giving it a little bit more of a jazzy feel. And uh, Mind Over Matter, produced by James Newton Howard, who's gone on to do quite a lot of uh, work in the film scoring world, I believe. Okay. Melissa Morgan, who I had the honor to interview on three occasions, as well as uh, review a more recent album that she did called Love Demands. This is the second reissue Soul Music Records did of her work that I interviewed her for. And this was her second full-length album, uh, love, well, actually, Love Changes was what um, Kashif's album was called, and we talked about that, but <laughs> hers was called Good Love. It does include the uh, Love Changes duet that they that Kashif and Melissa famously covered originally by Mother's Finest, but um, Kashif and Melissa's version became the definitive version, and it's, it's been covered since, but I think most will agree that uh, theirs uh, had the most impact in um, many ways. And Aside from that song, uh, there were some other singles on here. It didn't get as much promotion as it should have, but um, If You Can Do It, I Can Too, and um, Here Comes the Night. So that brings me to what interested me was that Karen White was a backing vocalist on Here Comes the Night, and Carl Sturkin and Evan Rogers, who did so many great productions, um, even in recent years with Rihanna, but certainly back in the 80s and 90s, um, 
they produced that song, and so I ended up interviewing Karen for the liner notes in addition to Melissa, who I did a more extensive interview, obviously, with. And let me just check the notes I made here, because it's really hard to remember all of this on the spot. There's someone else that I interviewed for this project. How could I forget Kashif? Yeah, that was, I think, the first time I maybe got to sort of speak with him, because I originally got a few kind words he offered for a tribute I wrote to Whitney Houston for blog critics when um, she died in 2012. But anyway, um, Melissa referred to Just For Your Touch on here as kind of her Debbie Boone kind of moment, and it is a really beautiful song. Um, so there's some hidden gems on here. The bonus tracks include, uh, let's see, two different remixes of Good Love. One's in, actually one, but one's extended, one's an edit. Then there are, uh, I guess, same for Here Comes the Night and same for uh, If You Can Do It, I Can Too. Now, this was a real dream come true for me. This is from Soul Music Records also, and this is more recent. Um, this is the Pointer Sisters' first two albums from 1973 and 1974, the self title album, and that's a plenty. I had the honor to interview both Anita and Ruth for this. Bonnie, um, just a little bit, not so much. Um, and as you know, of course, June... Um, died in 2006. Now, I grew up, and I would say, aside from Donna Summer, the Pointer Sisters were really my f uh, first, second, like, favorite acts ever growing up. Like, got all their albums at the record stores, you know, when they came out. Now, of course, I wasn't born back when these were uh, released, so I, I was an 80s baby, but... It was, these were ones that I did because of my dad's kindness taking me to use record stores when I was young. Discover at a young age for myself. And of course, the style that they did back at this time was so rooted in a lot of the 40s singing groups and pulling from different eras with um, Dizzy Gillespie, you know, Salt Peanuts and adapting that. Now, you know, the first big hit was uh, Yes We Can Can which is the cover of a Lee Dorsey tune from a few years earlier at the time, but they really made it an uh, international hit. Um, they did, let's see, Steam Heat, uh, I think that's the one from the Pajama Game, and Wang Dang Doodle, Love and Them Their Hills, the, were single releases in addition to Fairy Tale, which Anita primarily wrote and allowed the Pointer Sisters to become the first African-American female artist to perform the Grand Ole Opry in Asheville. So, um, and it's interesting because I've read uh, Ruth's book, I had read that before this, and Anita came out with a book since this, which I'm actually almost finished reading. But I was just very happy that I got to talk with both of them extensively, specifically about this period of time. So in the essay, I think you'll find a lot of interesting memories that they shared, um, some that are not necessarily in those books. Um, you know, Anita did a, I will say this is a side note, a very thorough job in her book of talking about the group's early years, you know, in the 70s. But, um, you know, there were some little anecdotes in here that might be a little different from what she shared in there. So um, I think this is a good investment just for understanding kind of where they came from musically as far as their beginnings in the recording industry. So that was a real honor for me. Uh, once again, uh, Soul Music Records did a much-deserved uh, collection on Vivian Reed. Now, Vivian might be best known to many for her role in Bubbling Brown Sugar on Broadway. She was a professor at Berklee College of Music when I was there. I didn't have the good fortune of having her as instructor, but I always remember the fondness that she was a judge of my first vocal proficiency exam because I did voice as my principal instrument. And uh, she gave me a very nice uh, score on it. And I started collecting her music shortly thereafter. It was just coincidence, but I found a bunch of her records at a store I was visiting in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, where I used to have a lot of family. And anyway, this all is from before that time. These are from 1968 to 1971, her recordings for Epic Records, most produced by Ted Cooper, covering a wide range of material. Um, ranging from You've Lost That Love and Feeling of the Righteous Brothers to Carol King's I Feel the Earth Move. Uh, she also worked with Van McCoy um, on a lovely tune called Missing You. So basically this is 20 tracks and 11 of them made up her self-titled Vivian Reed album from 68. Uh, the other 
the remaining nine songs were single only releases, um, including the first single she had out, Baby Baby, I'll Be Your Woman Till I Die. And uh, some later tunes like uh, Mama Open the Door, Don't Close the Door on Me, uh, Unbelievable. So there actually were a few other producers that she worked with um, on those singles. Um, and interestingly, on her album did remakes of uh, The Shape of Things to Come, which is from the movie Wild in the Streets, and Harper Valley PTA, which is uh, interesting. Uh, now, I did a very extensive interview with Vivian for Blog Critics um, a few years prior to this. You can still find that online and hear some of that on YouTube. But with this assignment, I interviewed her again just to get more specifics about the epic years because she's really had such a multifaceted and marvelous career spanning the decades, spanning countries, spanning um, different areas of the entertainment industry, stage, screen. Uh, she was in a movie called Heaven for Broadway in the early 80s. Um, and she performed in Paris for a long time. So she's really a powerhouse vocalist and she's adept at R&B, jazz, pop, dance. So check out her work and that's a good place to start just to get a feel for her uh, commercial beginnings. Now, um, the last single CD reissue I'm going to talk about, again from Soul Music Records, is the late Tasha Thomas, Midnight Rendezvous, uh, released on Atlantic Records in 79. Uh, Tasha was also on Broadway prior to her recording. She was in The Wiz. She played Auntie M. She recorded in the early 70s for Roulette Records. It's in a very small place in Alaska that's not even on most maps. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. I think it's J E U T Y N, if I remember correctly. Um, I now she died in 1984. Um, there's different um, things about when she was born, but either way, she was in her 30s. Um, the cause was denoted as cancer at the time, although I think there's been you know discussion of um, the fact that AIDS was so taboo at that time, but it might have been related to that. Now. There were two producers on this album, and it's funny because they're not people whose names come up a lot in discussion of great dance music, but James uh, Glazer and Peter Rubel, I hope I'm saying it right, because it's been a while, um, but I had the chance to interview Peter um, for this reissue, and I was so thankful because, you know, there really is not much out there on Tasha Thomas, and even... When she did Shoot Me With Your Love, which was her big disco hit off this album, um, she promoted it on TV quite a lot, but you're really hard-pressed to find those, to be able to see them. Uh, you know, like Midnight Special and Soul Train, and I don't even remember the other programs, but um, she, she did a lot of promotion for it. Now, um, Hot Butter Boogie and uh, Street Fever, those were also dance hits from this album, but she also did a bit of the blues with Drinking Again, and uh, even the ballad, You're the One I Love from Day to Day, very beautiful. Um, so I definitely recommend this. This has a total of 10 bonus tracks. It's interesting because the album's eight tracks and there's 10 bonus tracks. But they're all the alternate mixes uh, extended and edited of uh, Shoot Me With Your Love. Uh, I believe also, uh, yes, now it's coming back to me, uh, Misha Seagal the writer, um, who later worked with Randy Crawford on an album that I love called Don't Say It's Over. He worked with Tasha, so I got some insight from him for this uh, liner notes assignment, which is really cool because, you know, there's just not the footage out there, and a lot of people, in, uh, disco fans will know, Shoot Me With Your Love, which interestingly was originally demoed and planned for release by Venus Dobson. Um, but, you know, it just... I, it's hard to think of the words on the spot, but I would say that Tasha had a real fiery quality to her vo vocals, and the uh, talks I had with Peter and Misha suggested that her personality was that same way, and uh, even a couple other singers I've known who have uh, sang with who sang with her at some point in, on sessions, you know, said the same thing. Just a real one of a kind. Um, so it's, it's really interesting just that she came from this very small. Uh, bringing in Alaska, it's very mysterious in a lot of ways because it's just been so long since she left us, and you know there just wasn't a lot written about her at the time, and I, I don't even know how much you know she really shared about that, and you know it's unfortunate that she um, left so soon and struggled uh, because I think you know the, I I don't 
I don't remember. I'd have to go back. I, you know, but I don't know if there were clear reasons why you know there wasn't a follow-up album to this because this is their only full-length album. But um, you can read some about, um, like I said, Peter and Misha's thoughts about working with her and how they met up and their working process and the liner notes for this. Now, there's two box sets I wanted to show you. I know probably going on for a long time. But let me start with Donna Summer since I'm wearing this shirt. This is from Summer the Musical, which I'm very happy I got to see on Broadway in 2018. Now, this box set's simply called Donna, um, which is also made available in a vinyl version. This is the CD version. Uh, from Edsel Records um, under the banner of Driven by the Music, which most of Donna's uh, uh, catalog has been reissued through. Actually, almost all of it at this point, I think. Almost all of it, I should say. Not every single thing. But um, this box set contains uh, seven albums. It basically covers her Geffen years and her Atlantic years. And i got to push this button. Um, I ended up writing the liner notes for, uh, I think, four, actually, I should say, f yeah, four of the CDs in this. Cats Without Claws, All Systems Go, Another Place in Time, Mistaken Identity. I love Donna, like I said, she's my favorite growing up. Uh, I'm glad I got to see her in concert. Her passing was so saddening on so many levels. It was very disappointing to me. I, I really reached out to a lot of people, including Bruce Sedano and um, one of Donna's sisters, and Michael and Marty and, and Harold Faltermeyer, people who worked with their um, none were forthcoming and agreed to be interviewed. Um, so ultimately, um, another writer who's very accomplished was recruited to do um, the remaining liar notes. I know he had some established connections with those some of those people, so um, I know he's interviewed them for these um, various projects of Donna's. But in any case, it was really fun to go back and re-explore these, as a lot of these albums were childhood favorites of mine, and um, there were some. Uh, quotes we were able to get from the Stock Acre Waterman camp for the Another Place in Time reissue. And then Clifford Dawson, a very talented singer and songwriter for many people in his own right, who did some work on Mistaken Identity, he uh, took part in the interview for the essays that I wrote. And finally, I'm not going to have the time to go over this as I thought because my memory is running low on the computer, but the Average White Band Complete Studio Recordings, uh, this is definitely the most expansive project I've ever done. This was from the Edsel folks. They did a really great job. There was a lot of money put into this. It's very, um, very nicely done. There are 15 studio albums plus a live album and two albums of rarities and remixes, which you might hear playing in the background, but really quickly, I'll just show you as I'm talking, I mean, including their hits, um, Cut the Cake and Pick Up the Pieces. There's many early demos and alternate versions of songs that they cut. Of course, Queen of My Soul, A Love of Your Own, Let's Go Round Again, or some of their other big hits, Schoolboy Crush, which has been sampled quite a lot. Um, so, and the cool thing is, aside from the slipcase CDs that albums that were originally doubles or issued in gatefold sleeves or in um, sleeves that are replicating those gatefold designs, like uh, this one here, Feel No Fret, um, which includes When Will You Be Mine, not their biggest hit, but one that was really cool. Now, I interviewed both uh, founding members, uh, Alan Gorey and Hamish Stewart, for this liner notes. Um, it was an 11,000 word essay in the booklet. And so these albums go basically cover 1971 to 2003, so over 30 years of the AWB legacy. And that's the um, double CD of remixes and rarities, which is playing. Um, and then the booklet to give you a little feel of it here. So I'm about to run out of time, but thank you so much for listening. If you have questions, feel free to comment or get in touch with me via sorry via my Facebook page. Thanks so much uh, for supporting the music. Most of these CDs um, you can find readily on Amazon or other music retailers online. I'm not sure if all of them are still in print. I'm sure there's a few that aren't actually, but um, if you need help tracking some down, just let me know. I'll do my best to help out. So it's, it's really been an honor to interview the artists, producers, songwriters, and other musicians that I've mentioned doing these mini liner notes assignments. So it really has enriched the whole experience of listening to the music for me. And I hope reading about the histories in these liner notes that I've written will um, enrich the listening experience for you as well. Okay, thanks so much, and I hope you're doing well and staying safe. Take care. Bye.